1893, Fritjof Nansen noticed that his ship would constantly drift 20 to 40 degrees to the right of the wind direction. He told his friend Ekman about it, and he came up with what's called Ekman transport. So how does it work? Why couldn't the ship just move in the same direction as the wind? Well, first, we have to understand the Coriolis effect. As the planet spins, some parts of Earth are moving faster than others. For example, here are Alaska and Mexico. Even though they both took the same amount of time to end up where they started, Mexico traveled a greater distance than Alaska did. So Mexico is traveling faster. Here, you can see that areas closer to the equator, such as Mexico, are traveling faster than areas closer to the poles, like Alaska. If a cloud formed at the equator and drifted north, with its speed it would move faster than everything underneath it and move forward. Conversely, if it formed closer to the pole and drifted towards the equator, it would fall behind because it's moving slower. This is the same effect that makes a ball look like it's curving when you throw it while you're spinning, and it's also what makes hurricanes spin. So that's the Coriolis effect, and it explains countless phenomena that we see on Earth. But what does this have to do with Ekman transport? Well, because of the Coriolis effect, in the northern hemisphere, moving objects are deflected to the right, and in the southern hemisphere, they're deflected to the left. So that explorer kept moving to the right of the wind direction because of the Coriolis effect. But there's even more below the surface. Imagine water as a bunch of layers stacked on top of each other like a deck of cards. Say we're in the northern hemisphere and the wind blows in this direction. Well, because of the Coriolis effect, the surface layer is going to move to the right by about 45 degrees. But that surface layer also pulls on the layer beneath it, the same way the wind initially pulled on that surface layer. Except, because some of the energy was lost, it pulls with just a little bit less strength. So that angle will be less than 45 degrees. That layer also pulls on the layer beneath it, but with even less strength. And then the same thing happens with every subsequent layer. As you go deeper, the energy that's transferred between each layer quickly diminishes, so the spiral ends at a depth of between 100 to 150 meters. This is called an Ekman spiral. The net water transport of a spiral like this is about 90 degrees to the right or left, depending on the hemisphere. This movement of water is called Ekman transport, and it's crucial for marine life in coastal areas. With winds blowing along the coast, the net water movement will be to the right because of Ekman transport. This allows for deeper, cooler, and more nutrient-rich water to reach these coastal areas and provide for marine life in a process called upwelling. So, in short, the Coriolis effect deflects moving objects to the right or left, depending on the hemisphere. When the surface layer of the ocean deflects at an angle, it drags the water underneath it with decreasing force in a spiral shape. This movement of water provides marine life with nutrient-filled water, which is why Ekman transport is so important to coastal environments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new today.